HMS Hermes was one of the first aircraft carriers that was actually designed as such, with the ship being the first purpose-built design put into production, but the Japanese Hosho beating it into service as its production was not subject to the same delays and pauses as that of the Hermes. The ship that would eventually become Hermes started life as a seaplane carrier design, with a number of features that were more reminiscent of the much later ocean-going amphibious assault craft, with a rear dock that would accept a taxiing seaplane before bringing it up into the hangar, whilst a flight deck allowed for operations of both seaplanes and wheeled aircraft. A revision produced in the last year of World War I included a rotating catapult platform that would allow aircraft to be launched into the wind independent of the ship's orientation, but further knowledge gained from other ships such as HMS Furious and the ongoing conversion of HMS Eagle meant that other further revisions were due. By the end of the year, these revisions had gradually removed the seaplane dock, revised the superstructure to a single island, reduced the anti-surface gun battery, and increased the anti-aircraft battery and displacement, with the design now clocking in at just over 10,000 tonnes. She was launched in September 1919, but work was paused again whilst more information was gathered from Eagle and Argus. This resulted in the placement of the island and funnel to the starboard side, resulted in the removal of the rotating catapult, and added a tripod mast to support a basic fire control system for her guns. The aircraft lifts were enlarged and moved further apart, and the bow was revised so that it joined up with the flight deck without any gap, and the anti-surface battery was reduced still further. Her final displacement would be a fraction under 11,000 tonnes, with a gun armament of half a dozen single 5.5-inch guns for use against surface targets, and four single 4-inch guns for anti-aircraft work. She was designed for 25 knots on two shafts using 40,000 shaft horsepower, but turned out to be able to make 26 knots on just over 41,000 shaft horsepower when on trials. She would be further protected by a 3-inch armour belt and a 1-inch thick deck, which also happened to be the flight deck, technically making her the first armoured deck carrier. However, due to the relatively small size and lack of deck parking, even in the 1920s she could only carry around two dozen aircraft at a stretch. She would eventually commission into the fleet in 1924, and after taking part in trials and a fleet review, she was sent to the Mediterranean with an air group of ferry flycatchers and 3Ds for a year, operating alongside HMS Eagle until being reassigned to the Far East, where she would spend most of the 1920s, including a rather odd-sounding mission in which aircraft from Hermes and Argus were used to attack a pirate base, of all things, that had managed to persist on the Chinese coast. The 1930s would start with the Hermes still spending most of her time on the China station, shuttling back home for occasional refits and allocations of new aircraft, and in 1931 would take charge of the rescue effort looking for the survivors of the submarine Poseidon, which had suffered an accident and sunk during training. Later in the year, she sailed up the Yangtze River to help with catastrophic floods near the city of Hankow, and later on in the decade, she would have another run-in with pirates, this time with three of her torpedo bombers locating a captured ship and forcing the pirates to abandon the ship, thus rescuing the crew and passengers. Finally, in 1937, she left the Far East for the Coronation Fleet Review, and was then assigned to the Reserve Fleet as a training vessel. Although there were plans to overhaul her, her anti-aircraft battery, the massive number of ships that were undergoing similar refits in the run-up to World War II meant that this didn't actually occur. With the outbreak of war, she was assigned a dozen swordfish strike aircraft and sent to hunt U-boats, then made part of Force X alongside the French battleship Strasbourg, hunting for German blockade runners and raiders in the South Atlantic. With the rise of the Vichy French regime, Hermes launched a strike at the battleship Richelieu, succeeding in damaging it, but was herself damaged in a collision with HMS Corfu, an armed merchant cruiser. This would result in a stay in South Africa for repairs before she headed back out, now on the lookout for blockade runners from Germany, Italy or Vichy France. 
These searches gradually worked the Hermes around Africa and into the Indian Ocean, where she would be found when war with Japan broke out, and thus beginning she was assigned to the Eastern Fleet. Whilst preparing for an invasion attempt on Madagascar, based in what is now Sri Lanka, Hermes and her escort received warning of an incoming Japanese air raid, and so set off south to evade. But unfortunately they were spotted, and then ordered to turn back to get under fighter cover, since the swordfish were many things, but fighters definitely wasn't one of them. And in any case, the swordfish had been flown off earlier in order to clear the ship out to help her prepare for the invasion of Madagascar. Thus, when the Japanese air raid arrived, she was largely helpless against the three squadrons of dive bombers that attacked her. Half a dozen Fulmar fighters did manage to make it in time, and as a result, four of the attackers were shot down and an additional five damaged in exchange for the loss of two Fulmars, uh, but unfortunately this wasn't enough and Hermes was hit repeatedly by the Japanese bombs and would sink. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.